So Konami just announced their follow-up release to the highly successful masterpiece Platinum Blue Eyes White Dragon. For this release, they decided to go with the Dark Magician in the OG starter deck artwork, and it's going to be going up for pre-order for 1300 US dollars on September 6th, 2023. As soon as I saw that price, I knew I was going to be making this. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about the absurd price tag of $1,300, how it will fare in the long run, and if it will hold up like the original Platinum Blue Eyes did over the next two years. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so just to recap what the Masterpiece line is, it's basically Konami pretending to be a high-end company and releasing their IP in precious metal form. In this case, it's one ounce of silver, laid flat and made to look like the original Blue Eyes White Dragon. And the first release was in 2021 for $1,000 for this Blue Eyes. They initially told us that it's going to be only 1,000 edition size, but we later found out that it's released in three regions, 1,000 each. So there's actually a total population of 3,000 Blue Eyes, and I would suspect that it's going to be the same thing for the Dark Magician as well. The way that you know what region your card comes from is on the back of the acrylic, where the card is placed, you're gonna see that there's gonna be an addition size number out of 1000, and then right beside that, you're gonna see whether it's NA, EU, or South America. Now, the Blue Eyes release was highly controversial because the website totally crashed. Everybody was so hyped, and because of the government handing out free money, everybody thought that this would do really well in the long term. Now, in hindsight, it definitely did pretty well. It doubled its MSRP in just under two years. However, if you look closely, you'd see that the cards pretty much hit almost six, seven thousand dollars at one point before crashing back to two thousand. So in the short term, a lot of people got burned. However, if you bought it for MSRP and have held for two years, you're doing pretty well for yourself. You could argue that the market as a whole crashing also reflects the same price because pretty much everything else crashed the same way. So maybe it's not just the platinum blue eyes that's like a sole offender. It's the whole market as a whole that caused this price drop. However, I would argue that the product itself was very hyped. It was not as organic as I would like it to be. And I think the price point started too high on Konami's side for me to think that it's actually justifiable. You have to understand that an ounce of silver is pretty much just like 20 or 30 bucks, right? It's impossible to reason how they can just slap this picture of the blue eyes on there and somehow be able to charge like 300% more. It's absolutely absurd and in my opinion, that's what really caused the crash for what it is. It's inorganic hype, it's not real, it didn't have growth and I think Konami was extremely greedy with this release. And I said all of that at 1000 USD. Imagine what I have to say for 1300 USD. Are they out of their mind? Like literally what is going on in their head that allows them to do something like this? They actually released gold coins, like solid one ounce gold coins for 2000 USD on AP Max. You can get one ounce of gold with the Yu-Gi-Oh! IP on it for 2000 USD. How dare they charge 1000 US dollars and then 1300 US dollars for literally one ounce of silver. To me, it speaks to the idea that they are actually watching the aftermarket and they want a piece of it. That is the biggest mistake an IP brand can make when it comes to their products. Once a company starts to take a look at the aftermarket prices and they get greedy enough to want a piece of that by increasing the MSRP, to me, that's them digging their own graves. And in the long term, that tells you that this company is not to be taken serious anymore. The idea of something growing in the aftermarket organically comes from the fact that this person is creating something out of passion. They're not making it out of greed. Now, this is not to say that Konami or Nintendo or any of these companies should not be profitable. Of course they should be. However, there's always an underlying aspect that shows that there's some sort of passion behind the products that you're releasing that people can use to trust that, oh, this person is not going to completely destroy their brand in the long term. So they're willing to pay a little bit more. The reason that high-end artwork goes for so much is because people who have money to invest in this art can rely on the fact that dead people are not going to be able to tarnish their brand in the long term. The brand is already settled, it's done. Whatever is there, that's all that remains, right? Now, 
in a small microcosmic way, if we want to look at Konami and Yu-Gi-Oh, if we can trust that Konami is looking for the long-term aspect, if we can see that, oh, these people actually take care of their brand, they're not actually trying to just maximize profits they are trying to be profitable at a sustainable rate people would have a lot more faith in their products and be willing to pay those aftermarket prices a lot more when konami does something like increase the price by 30 percent for absolutely no reason there's literally no reason for them to do this because we know that silver does not cost that much we know that the acrylic doesn't cost that much so the only way we can explain a price hike of this magnitude is these guys are taking a look at the aftermarket they're seeing how people who have invested in their ip in their products have been successful in their investments and they're saying we want to rob you of that it is pretty much what psa does when it comes to upcharging you on like when you get like a high grade for a high-end card it's like ridiculous like your job is not to look at how the cards do later on if you are doing a good job they will be successful anyway and same thing with the Yu-Gi-Oh brand here you should not be taking a look at the aftermarket what you should be doing is look we have this product how can we produce it so that it is limited edition it still brings in hype it is not just a mass-produced commodity commodity but at the same time we let the free market do its thing and uphold the value how the free market sees it if we try to grab a bigger piece of the aftermarket pie of a product that is already grossly expensive at one thousand dollars it's like to me like they've kind of lost touch on reality here and even if you decide to purchase it at one thousand three hundred dollars you're going to be adding a hundred bucks for tax maybe fifty dollars for shipping that's already fourteen hundred and fifty dollars that is absolutely ridiculous at that price point you might as well go to ap max like i said and grab a gold Yu-Gi-Oh coin you will still have the Yu-Gi-Oh ip embedded in precious metals but at least you're getting one ounce of gold instead of one ounce of silver and one other thing that i want to add on this is when they released the blue eyes like it wasn't even well made if you watch my unboxing video which i highly recommend it's one of the first videos on my channel you would see that the card comes scratched up there's not a single 10 in psa for this card every single one of them always grades an eight because it is so poorly made so it's like not only are you gouging the collector but you're not even delivering a good product it is ridiculous just how much they are upcharging for this so in conclusion no i do not think it's worth a thousand dollars i definitely don't think it's worth thirteen hundred dollars it's absolute insanity i don't think that it will do really well in the long term and honestly i'm just disappointed in konami i knew that they were a cash grab company but i didn't think that they would stoop this low it's a really bad pr move and i don't support it whatsoever i'm not a financial advisor but i don't recommend that you buy this product i think you should vote with your wallet i will not be purchasing this even though i'm a huge memorabilia guy and i would recommend that you make the same statement as well but with that rant over if you enjoyed the video hit the like button subscribe comment down below your thoughts i'm going to be active in the comments i want to know is konami out of their mind or will you be picking this up if you want to support me further i have a patreon and you can use the links in the description to shop other than that i hope you guys enjoyed and i hope you learned something i'll see you in the next one peace